I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful Spring, Nova Scotia, and today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Ock here with MaritimeGarden.com. Hey there, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGarden.com, and uh, I thought I'd do another video, hopefully the final video, on the goutweed situation on my property. I've got two areas where I uh, transplanted some rhubarb uh, that I got somewhere else, and it turns out that rhubarb had goutweed in amongst the roots, and uh, I was unfamiliar with goutweed at the time, and uh, I let it go for a number of years, and it sort of colonized an area. This, this here spot, I had a, an area about, let's say, four feet by six feet, uh, roughly speaking that had goutweed growing in it and I have another area of my property which is about four, four feet by four feet, maybe a little bit bigger, that had goutweed growing in it. So I've got a number of videos that I've done over the last, I guess, year and a half. I think the first video I did was two falls ago, so the fall of 2015. Um, so this, this is two years since the first video that I uh, started uh, doing this uh, this approach, this this zero cost, zero time approach to dealing with goat weed. And I'm just zooming in here to show that in this particular area I don't see any sign that the goat weed has returned. It seems to have been uh, eradicated. That's why I'm zooming in here and doing this. I don't see anything. Uh, I'm doing this for the benefit of people that have viewed the other videos. Uh, I'll put uh, links to them at the end of this video. Uh, I don't see any uh, other goat weed growing here. Um, this might look like goat weed from a distance, but these are just uh, raspberry, uh, just just baby raspberry, a raspberry blackberry are you know very aggressive and they, they colonize very well. And I'm I'm totally fine with them taking over here because you can you know uh, <laughs> that's a weed I like. <laughs> In my vegetable garden, I've got a real blackberry problem. Um, I don't want blackberries, and the, the ones that uh, encroaching in on the vegetable garden area are not particularly uh, tasty or, or productive blackberries are just a wild variety that uh, seems to be, does a very good a job at surviving um, but doesn't do a very good job of giving me delicious blackberries. Anyway, off the topic here. Uh, so, how do we deal with this? Um, you get bags of leaves that your neighbors put out on the side of the road. I gathered an entire truckload of these that I intended to use in a part of my vegetable garden, but I ended up using the entire truckload on these two areas, uh, which would be advice, piece of advice number one, um, don't be stingy, uh, use a lot, put a lot on, because um, uh, it doesn't cost anything, and the, you know, the heavier the layer, uh, the better a job you're going to do of smothering out the, the weed, whatever that weed is. And this general approach is called, I call this, I don't know what it's called, but I call it cover and smother because that's what you're doing. You're covering the area and smothering it out. And I mean, let me speak a little bit more specifically to the approach. What am I doing? Um, you've got a plant. How do plants get energy? Um, they get energy from the sun. They have to get sunlight to, um, to grow, to live, and so on, to complete that whole process. They get stuff out of it, they get water, they get nutrients, but they need sun to make it all come together. Without the sun, the only, the only energy the plant has is what is stored in its roots. So by covering it with um, paper and uh, just, uh, this is just uh, leaves, because everybody's raking their leaves up this time of year. It's November here in Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, by covering it with this, you're basically putting the plant in a situation where it's desperately trying to reach the sun to get at that sunlight to recharge its batteries so to speak and you're, you're making that effort impossible for the plant it's not going to get to the sun it's going to hit that paper and the paper will remain quite strong for about two months and then it'll start to get kind of weak but by then at least where I'm living here by then it'll be so cold nothing's growing it'll be, the ground will be frozen and everything's just dormant so everything that's trying to grow to get any kind of energy um, um, is not going to be able to do that so it's kind of I'm starving the plant and the next spring 
I do this in the fall and the spring because that's when people tend to bring leaves out to the side of the road. Right? I'm, just, I'm doing it because it, it's the most convenient and easy and inexpensive time for me. I can literally, on my way home from work, throw a bunch of leaves on my vehicle, and when I've got a few minutes, I can run out in the yard and do this. And to do a, an area like this takes a few minutes, really. I mean, this took me maybe 15 minutes in total, uh, less time if I wasn't filming it. Um, um, I mean, all you're doing is putting it on. Uh, I cut the bags the way I do because it just, it's just easier to do it that way. And this is the fastest way I figured out how to do it. Just cut down each side of the bag, splay it out, and, uh, you know, push the leaves out, leaving a bit of a lip so you can overlap the next layer. And your layers should overlap at least six inches, um, at least. And it might look like a lot of leaves, but this will compress down and basically be almost nothing by, by next spring. Um, so, I mean, I can't think of a more you know, inexpensive and, I mean, it's effective um, over the long run. It's not effective in the short term. I've seen people online using blow torches. I'm sure that feels really good and you get a real, uh, maybe perhaps cathartic, cathartic uh, 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 feeling <laughs> from blow torching these invasive weeds. But, I mean, I. And number one, in terms of how much time, it would take me much more time to blow torch this entire area, aside from the fact that it might set the forest on fire. Um, it's not always doable. Um, but it would take more of my time to blow torch this area. On top of that, I'm not so sure it would kill the roots. I mean, you'd have to heat the soil to an incredible temperature to kill the roots. I mean, look, whole forests burned down. And the amount of heat in a fire, forest fire is incredible. And what happens after a year after a forest burns down? Everything starts growing, <laughs> right? Because it doesn't kill down very far. Uh, it kills what's above the soil. It doesn't, you know, that, that heat only gets down so far. And whatever uh, living things are, are left living uh, beneath that in the soil just come back. So for me, this is a better approach. Now, it might take two or three years for you to eradicate the plant. But in terms of your time, um, it might take two or three years, but... The time you put into it might only be an hour or so over that entire stretch of time. So <laughs> for me, that's easy. And in terms of money, right? I mean, this doesn't cost anything. I'm using stuff people threw away. The, all of the materials were provided for nothing. Um, so for me, this is a, a better way to go. Um, you can use a knife. I find scissors are easier. I, I think in other videos I've done, I've used a knife. But uh, generally speaking, a scissors seems to do a better job of getting through the bag and everything. And if you've got some sort of border, you, you have to tuck it underneath the border just to make sure that the, the roots from the invasive weed you're dealing with uh, aren't getting, um, you know, into that bordering material. Here I'm just spreading it out a bit and, you know, patting it down a little bit using a stick, totally low budget, um, just keeping it real for people that don't have a lot of, a lot of gear. You don't need expensive equipment to deal with invasive weeds. Now here's another area in the garden where I had the problem. This pl place was way, way worse. Um, it was thick, thick, thick with gut weed. And as you can see here, it's come through. Now, back in the spring when I treated the two areas, I did a really lousy job of this area. I did a very thorough job of the other area, and you can see because hardly any has come back. And here I was stingy on my bags, and I had a couple spaces or tears or wherever where uh, uh, I'm guessing the gut weed found their way back through. Um, now, this is nowhere near as bad as it was when uh, I first started dealing with it. It was really, really bad. Um, so, this is, I mean, if you think about how weak that plant is, I've weakened it considerably because that whole area was green and it was solid gout weed. And now you can see it's just barely a, a shadow of its former self. Uh, I have a neighbor's property that's uh, to the right of me here. I mean, I guess to, to my left as you're looking at me, but if you're looking at the screen, it's on the right hand side and it, it doesn't matter. I got a neighbor adjacent to my house. I do not want this gout weed to go through the forest and get to their lawn. That would be horrible. Uh, so uh, um, I, I actually am not showing in the video here, but I um, put the bags back as far into the woods as I can and I'm constantly inspecting underneath the branches of those trees because I mean, uh, the gout weed will find a way to travel through if you let it. I don't really see it going there and uh, you know just like any sort of uh, treatment like this wherever you think the problem is you have to go beyond where you think it is 
because it's it's just like a cancer. You know, you cut off the hand if the you know if the finger has cancer, you cut off the hand sort of thing, um, just to be super duper sure. Um, so it's the same sort of thing. If you think it stops three feet away from you, cover six feet away from you, sort of thing. Um, so this time around, um, I'm really hitting this hard. I'm putting a lot of materials. I think I used about a dozen bags. This is an area that's six by six. <laughs> and I used at least a dozen of these big uh, uh, double ply heavy craft paper bags. Um, so there's there's a tree growing in the middle of it and I think it's why I've traditionally done a lousy job of covering this. The tree just makes it uh, difficult to you know do a really good thorough job of overlapping the seams and all that sort of stuff. But it's just a question of not being quite so lazy and just being a little extra meticulous and being a little more careful with it. So this time around, uh, I decided to really, really uh, hit it extra hard and put a lot of leaves in a lot of bags. Um, so, uh, you know, basically the leaves hold the bags in place and keep them from blowing away and help keep the light from reaching the plant. And the bags keep the plant from sending its young, tender shoots up to the light, right? Because when, when shoots are really young, it depends on the kind of plant you're dealing with, but when the shoots are really young, they just can't uh, push through bags. Um, if you were dealing with something like Japanese knotweed, I think you'd need um, a number of layers of cardboard and, and a lot of weight to deal with that because they, they have a really, really strong sort of root base, almost like a rhubarb. And they'll, I've seen places where people have tried to suppress knotweed and they pushes everything up, um, it almost will not be denied, so you need a lot of weight on top of that, maybe three or four layers of cardboard, and then a lot of weight on top of the cardboard to hold it all down. Anyway, for here, this seems to work just fine. Um, so, don't be stingy, hit it hard, and cover it up at least twice a year. I really should have done this about a month ago, but I just didn't see any uh, uh, leaves handy, so I'm doing it now. Um, still, I think it's it's going to work. This this you know hopefully uh, this is the last year I have to do this. So hope you like the contact. Uh, hope that was uh, useful. Uh, subscribe, share, like us on Facebook. Um, hit the little bell thing uh, so you can be notified when I've got new videos out. And uh, until next time. Oh, and also don't forget to check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. So until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.